Hey, Wes here. Thanks for joining me today. Well, I've got a lump of clay. I've got a pookie. And I have my cup of coffee. So I thought, well, may as well make a pot. Actually, this summer I have a class that I am doing. And I want to do a little bit of a video on how to make a basic coiled pot. So let's get started. All right, here I've got a clump of wild clay. It has roughly 20% uh, of uh, temper in it. I use grog, just ground up pottery sherds. And I mean, we all kind of make our decisions about how we're going to do these things. Most coil pots are made more or less the same, uh, but you can also cut corners. You know, it depends. Do you want this to be totally authentic the way pots were maybe made 800 years ago? Or are you willing to uh, do some things that are more modern? And um, I guess I think I kind of get in between. So one of the things I do is I'm willing to use a rolling pin uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, one thing, it, it's quicker, it's easier, and it's more consistent. I can uh, get the walls of my pot to be very similar throughout. That's less likely to cause uh, breakage. I have a couple of... Uh, Little sticks here, they're a little less than a quarter of an inch thick, and I use those to help get a nice even um, piece of clay. If you don't do that, what I find is on the edges, the, the pin just kind of rolls over the edge. The edges are thinner than the middle. And this is more than I need. I'm not going to make a very big pot today. Uh, my plan is to uh, put some clay in the pookie and then add one coil to it uh, just largely to demonstrate how to add coils um, and if you want to just keep adding more coils to it and make a bigger and bigger pot this process is the same no matter what this is just a, uh, a cut up a pillowcase uh, if you don't use something like that what ends up happening sometimes is the clay sticks to your board and then it rips and causes you trouble all right i would say that's rolled out as thin as i need it to be a lot of times i'll take a little scraper kind of smooth some of those wrinkles out although there's certainly going to be more down the road so here's my little pookie so and actually, this is going to be, my plan is to make a two-part video. The first one is making the pot. And then I want to do another one about cleaning it up. And that's something that it uh, the pot will dry overnight. And uh, then I'll clean it up tomorrow. But everything today is about the structural integrity of the pot. And... Actually, by the time I'm done with this, and it'll take me about an hour, I suppose, uh, it can be fired and it'll be a pot. It may not be particularly pretty, uh, so I might want to do some finishing. But today it's all about um, just building the pot itself. Now what I want to do is have these sides come up fairly abruptly. And the reason is because of the pookie. What will happen, you can see that already, always you end up with some kind of a ridge on it uh, where the pookie hits the clay or the clay hits the pookie. And uh, that can be kind of problematic. Uh, so the more you bring it up so you get less of a ridge there, uh, you will be better off. There's less cleaning up uh, to do. And then the another thing is if your clay is particularly wet, it's going to want to sag down and that will create more of a ridge along the pookie as well. So I just try to bring it straight up. The pinch that I'm doing, I'm pulling it up and also pushing it in uh, because the diameter on the inside is smaller than the diameter out here. 
So I have to pinch it in kind of like a pleat uh, in a way. I just push it in. So you're going to need scrapers. And so let's talk about that just a little bit. Oh, by the way, when I am scraping this to get the ridges and the bumps out of it, even it out, but I always support it on the other side. Otherwise, if I just use a scraper, it's just going to keep pushing that clay out over the rim of the pookie. So you can use pretty much anything you want as a scraper. Uh, I actually, these are uh, from the lid of Rubbermaid containers. Here is a scraper for uh, from a gourd. Uh, you can use almost anything that is relatively firm. I like these because uh, they are somewhat flexible, but not real, real flexible. Uh, so if you look around the house, you certainly don't need a gourd scraper. However, this would be the traditional uh, thing to use. You can use whatever kind of works for you. So now I'm also trying to smooth out these little ridges or bumps and things. Uh, those can be cleaned up later. But it's easier if we clean it up today. Again, I'm pushing in just above the pookie line to try and get rid of a ridge there. Although I always end up with a ridge both on the outside and on the inside. And I have to spend some time cleaning it up later. I don't use try to use too much water. But you can use a little bit of water to lubricate. And then I'm going to use the scraper on the outside too. Try and even it out. Try to make it reasonably round. That's always a challenge. But you know, the, the authentic part of this, if you look at the pottery in museums, you know, some of it is exquisitely symmetrical and beautiful. But most of it isn't. I mean, there, this is stuff that they were using oftentimes on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of it, of course, was probably ceremonial, had bigger meaning or purpose. Um, and the craftsmanship of the Native Americans all those years ago was amazing. Uh, but to say that it is perfect, uh, that would not be true. In fact... If you look at, say you go to the markets in Santa Fe and you look at the pottery that is made today by Native Americans, that is absolutely amazing. I mean, the, the precision is incredible, uh, but I rarely saw that level of precision on really old pots. And my interest is making an old pot in, in a fairly traditional kind of way. So you can see what I have here. I probably should smooth that out a little bit more, but I'll work on it more. I'm going to add one coil. The clay, you can see, is pretty soft. And so if I add another coil right now, it's likely to slump. Uh, but if you just walk away, drink some coffee for, you know, even a few minutes, but an hour, uh, this clay will firm up quite a bit and won't move around quite as much. Sometimes what I also do is get the scraper down right in between that level of the, the pookie and the clay. And you can see that there's quite a ridge there, but we'll take care of that in the next video. So I'm inclined just to leave this as it is for right now. It's only taken basically 11 minutes on the video to do this much. Uh, some people work faster than others. But let's just let this sit. I'll come back and add a coil uh, in a while. All right, it is, uh, it is 45 minutes later, and the clay is still plastic and pliable, but it has firmed up quite a bit. The one thing you have to watch out for, see this cracks? The cracks almost always seem to happen on the rim. And so what I typically do is very lightly kind of work across them. Some clay cracks more readily than others. 
Right, so let's uh, just kind of even off the top, although this is pretty even, but if you uh, kind of make a fresh edge, I think it just is a little easier to put on the, the next coil. The other thing is that that edge might be a little bit drier, so and I might have a crack or something there, so I'm just going to cut that off. Don't have to do that. If it's pretty even, it's probably not necessary. I'm not going to put a very big coil on, and the size of your coil, I usually at least the size of my index finger or thumb, maybe just a little bit bigger. Somewhat depends on the uh, size of the pot that you're making. I kind of like to have a coil that go all, go all the way around the pot. You want the coil to be as even as you can, but you know, it's never going to be perfect. It's not that big a deal. Okay, this is obviously more clay than I need. Right? So let's just pull that off. The other thing that I do, and not everybody does, I, I do pat it down kind of flattish. Um, I think it just bonds to the pot a little bit better or easier, but um, you can leave it round. It's okay. It's whatever seems comfortable to you. The whole purpose of this next step is to bond the coil to the bottom. And now, what you will see with a lot of modern potters, they will use some slip and scratch it up and stuff. Don't think that's really necessary, especially if your two pieces of clay are the same amount of wetness. Uh, I have just never had that need. So what I do is I, there's different ways to position your hands, but I tend to just push down with my thumb. Um, Different people do it different ways. They go all the way around. Now, one thing is to th where you put the uh, the coil makes a difference. If you want the pot to flare out, then put the coil to the outside. Uh, if you want it to bring in, you kind of put it to the inside. In this case, I'm just laying it right on top, and it all can get kind of pushed around uh, later anyway. So I'm holding it on the inside to, so I have equal pressure and smearing the clay down to on the outside. You always want to think about this equal pressure here. I'm also working a little bit backwards. Obviously it doesn't equal out and even out here. So I just cut out so it fits. If your clay is too dry, you can add a little bit of water to it. Okay, once Now, for me, once I go around once, I, I go back the other direction a second time. It just, and try and even it out a little bit. We still have a ridge on the inside that we have to take care of. One thing you think about is you're pushing clay from uh, this coil down to the other side. So it's kind of like a shingle. So they, they overlap. Um, and if you do that, then it seems like you're less likely to have um, cracks. Uh, sometimes you can develop cracks where you have a seam. Uh, but the more you kind of smear it from one side to the other, um, it just doesn't seem to be a problem. I haven't had too much trouble with that. Okay, so that's more or less the inside, or the outside. So let's do the inside. Okay, this is all backwards to me because of the camera. But what I want to do is uh, do the same thing on the inside that I did on the outside. And I think you can see that. I just push... I'm supporting on the outside, pushing down on the inside. 
So the top coil becomes part of the bottom pot. If you have a crack, you go perpendicular to the crack to fill it in. We'll use a scraper uh, with all of this and that will even it out. It will further uh, move clay from the coil to the pot. Now one thing I can feel as I do this it just inevitably the pot starts moving to the outside and that can enhance in a negative way that rim along the pookie line. Now the next step is to uh, start Obviously, this is much thicker than the rest of the pot, so I want to start to thin it out and bring the pot up. And I think with all of these, you want to do it in small increments. You don't want to try and move too much clay too quickly. Otherwise, it tends to crack. Um, so one thing, I so I'm just squeezing it and it tends to squeeze up, ooze out like you would with a tube of toothpaste. I'm also kind of pushing in a little bit because I don't want my pot to flare out. It's kind of that pleating action. It seems to work better if I'm working on my side. And so I'm pushing in, kind of uh, pushing together and pushing in at the same time. And squeezing this clay what you want to try and do is get as even a wall as you can not only for aesthetic reasons but uh, it will end up heating and drying unevenly if you have thick and thin walls so what you want is as consistent as you can you're less likely to have structural problems the other thing that I, besides squeezing, I kind of move my thumb up or your fingers up in the direction you want the clay to go. So it's obviously looking pretty uh, messy, isn't it? So we'll see if I can get that straightened out here in a minute. Some clay is more pliable or plastic than others. This is not too bad. Well, it feels like it kind of wants to crack. Okay, I've kind of done as much as I want to do right now with this. So, let's get the, the scraper going here. So I just move the clay in the direction I want it to go. I'm supporting on the inside and scraping on the outside in this case. Then, once I get that, I'll scrape on the inside. Go back and forth a couple times to get it the way I want it to go. You, you know, I I have never worked on a wheel, but it looks to me like the clay that people, when they work on the wheel, is pretty wet. Uh, that will, I think, work against you in hand building like this. You want it, uh, I hate to say that you just want it dry, but you do not want it so sopping wet. Uh, it will start to slump on you. It won't hold its shape as well. Let's work on the inside a little bit. Now the other thing with your... I like different sized or shaped um, scrapers. So having a round uh, edge is nice. Having something flat, having something a little concave can help. This is flat. So depending on what I'm trying to do, I will change the shape of the and size of the scraper and I've just seen that everybody kind of has a, a system or tools that they just get comfortable with you know I like this little knife here for cutting clay some people use um, pieces of flint uh, arrowheads or you know, lithics of one sort or another. Um, the other thing that works actually quite well, this is a piece of uh, hacksaw blade, and I use that not only for cutting, but also for scraping. And the more you do this, it seems almost like if you just think of where you want the clay to go, it has a reasonable chance of going there. 
but sometimes it also seems that clay has a mind of its own and uh, it goes where it wants to go. Okay, so that's a little more flared out than I want it to be. Pleat it in, move it in a little bit. I'm also feeling along the way this felt a little thicker. So if it's thick, I squeeze it. If it's thin, I leave it alone. Once I do the inside, I go back to the outside. Some of the divots and uneven pieces can kind of be straightened out when we clean it up tomorrow. But our goal here today is to have a pot that is in the shape that we want it to be because we're not going to change the shape tomorrow. Uh, it's just going to be too firm. We want to have even walls to the extent that we can. We want the size of the pot to be what we want it to be. Uh, we can't really add to it very easily tomorrow. If it's fairly smooth, your life is a little bit easier tomorrow. Uh, but I can see in here, there's just all kinds of unevenness. I'm going to try and get some of that out. And I'm letting the curve of the scraper kind of dictate the curve of the pot. I have a fair amount of work I want to do, but it just seems like the top is kind of getting really uneven. So this is another way that I'm inauthentic. I have this, I think they call them banding wheels. Uh, it can be really useful. I don't use it for shaping, but I do use it sometimes for painting or in this case, uh, what I want to do is uh, cut the rim off, even that out. And that will uh, give me kind of a better shape to work with. I tell you, getting an even rim is something that I just really struggle with. Okay, you can see that turned out actually pretty good. So yeah, let's uh, let's smooth this a little bit. This is another one of those times that if it feels floppy, a little too wet, uh, I think it works just to walk away for a while and let it firm up. You might think about using your scraper in different directions, not always the same. You know, if you go around like this, obviously it, it creates that roundness, but sometimes it helps to move the clay from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top just for fun. I, I think I'm going to try and put a little bit of a flare to it. That might be a mistake. And I think uh, for me, rims are the hardest part. It seems like they are never round. Uh, they're never symmetrical. Um, they get all wonky and wobbly. So the more you mess with them, the more that's likely to happen. So sometimes if you want to kind of create an even form, I'll use a shape of a rock like this. Dip it in some water. And it helps it become a little more consistent. You know, when I look at pottery sherds, though, old pots, I, I am impressed with how even they seem to be. Okay, let's look, uh, work on this rim. Wet it down. Take a rock. Right, now I have a little piece of uh, deer hide. Get that nice and wet. Thank you, Kyle, for this. It works really well, usually. All right, not perfect, uh, but not bad. Pot has been sitting for a couple of hours since I made it, and it should be fairly firmed up. And the ideal situation now is for it to dry slowly and to dry upside down. The reason is, uh, by being upside down, gravity will kind of pull the moisture down to the rim, and the, 
The rim is the thing that wants to dry the fastest and then it's going to crack and we don't want that. Also by being upside down, you get less air circulation. Uh, so this should be okay now, though it's still kind of flexible. So we have to be very careful. Turn it upside down. I can take the pookie off and you can see that there's quite a rim to it. But it, this is really delicate right now. It's kind of floppy. So what I want to do is just cover it up and walk away. And uh, tomorrow I will uh, actually clean it up some. That will be video number two of this series. So for right now, we are good with this. Well, we've made a simple pot and it's basically ready to go. It's not pretty by any means. Uh, but it could be dried and fired just the way it is and everything else from now on is aesthetics And that's what we'll do in the next video is start cleaning it up and getting rid of all those bumps and bruises and irregularities So thanks for joining me. Appreciate that until next time. This is Wes wishing you health happiness peace and love. Take care. Bye-bye